And now for a public service announcement. The Seagull D-304. Have you ever considered the 1963 chronograph from Seagull? This video will aim to show you how to consider it properly. Right, let's get into it. If you wish to purchase one of these rare birds, keep in mind that you need to purchase the correct model. And the correct model is the only model. And the only model is this one. The original Seagull D-304 1963 chronograph. Numbered and limited. If you haven't received a blue cardboard box with a paper sheathing that you can pull away to reveal Seagull in silver lettering, then you have bought the wrong one. You could end up with a green box like this one with a red star on it, but that is wrong. This is the only model, the Seagull model. But it may make you a dirty, filthy commie. And so I did what the man in the public service announcement told me to do. And through my contact in Austria, I managed to procure a real Seagull D304 chronograph. Or as it is called on the Seagull website, the Seagull Aviation Chronograph Vintage Edition Mechanical Watch D304. And the box is blue with a paper sheathing. And when you slip it out and open it up, you are firstly met with the manual as usual and this manual as stated before in my other seagull video contains the manual for every seagull movement ever made and then you remove that layer and are met with the watch itself and prepare yourselves because this is very different from what you think it will be and through these pictures here you can see that it indeed looks very, very different. The first thing you notice is that it is basically devoid of color. And not only because I've taken these photographs in black and white, it really is simply silver and ivory. The only color accent is the chronograph second hand, which is red. But anyway, let's get back to the actual unboxing of this thing. The specs, well, you have a diameter of 37 millimeters, which isn't very orthodox. You have a lug width of 20 millimeters and a lug to lug width of 46 millimeters. The watch is resistant to three bar or certified to three bar, but that basically means that you shouldn't even wash your hands with it and definitely not scramble your brains under water. The glass is hard lex and therefore you don't have the luxurious sapphire glass nonsense. This is basically vintage hardcore. There is no display case back. In this case, you have the very aviatory looking symbol, which is a red star and a blue ribbon, and then the ever so important plaque that certifies that this is the limited edition, numbered, and there are only 10,000 pieces. The case thickness is a very, very sleek 12 millimeters, which means that this will basically fit under any shirt cuff at any given time. I want to continue with a few details that I find to be very important when it comes to this watch and why this watch sets itself apart from its um, fake sister. Firstly, you have the dial and it's this wonderful, crazy ivory sunburst. Just fantastic in real life as well. And then you have the logo, which isn't a red star, but this one is actually called the Star Trek logo which is also very prominent if you buy the HKED models of this watch. In my opinion, this is one of the most awesome logos on a watch I've ever seen. And here you can see the full watch dial in all of its glory. The hands are very beautifully machined and they remind you of broad arrows without the arrow. There's some Lamborghini in there as well, I think. Anyway, you also have the applied indices that are split pyramid spaceship shaped. I don't know, but they're very, very awesome looking. There are no indices on 3 or 9, and the only Arabic main indices are 12 and 6. But the font, I mean, it's incredible, almost futuristic. It's very difficult to describe these details, but the only thing I know is, for me anyway, they really work. 
If you look at the small second hand, you have this wonderful hypnotic pattern to it. It's just mesmerizing. On the other chronograph, you have a black arrow, which sets itself apart from the other small second. You then have the red chronograph second hand in the middle as the only real detail, since all the other hands are black or silver. The case is basically all polished, including the lugs, so there is no brushing going on anywhere. So if you like brushing, this is not the watch for you. And now let's return to the all-important case back. As you can see in this slightly artistic photo, you have the red star and the ribbon across it. It says c gull and then you have the plaque with the number. Now since this is a true numbered and limited version, this watch is number 1235 out of 10,000. Now there isn't much of a movement to show you because there is no open case back, and it's not specifically stated on this site what exact movement is powering this watch. However, I will venture a guess and say that it is the same as its fake sister, the ST1901. Let's move on to the actual strap, and it's a black leather strap with some ivory stitching. It's comfortable, but probably not the best quality. And on my 19 centimeter or 7.48 inch or 0.000944 fur long caveman wrist, the watch sits very nicely. It's not too big, it's not too small. Even though it's 37 millimeters, it just feels like a nice 38. It's a little bit slimmer than its fake sister. But let's remind ourselves about the fake sister in a little side-by-side -side comparison. As you can see, they are vastly different. And the problem that I mentioned before is that, well, this whole chase for the actual D304 is a little bit more complicated than I first thought. These aren't the only ones. There are more. Not fake ones, but actual seagull ones. For instance, you have one that looks like the fake sister and is a limited run of 5,500. Then you have another sea gull which doesn't seem to be limited in any way. It has a similar case back to this one, but the thing is, I think we're going to have to give up. This has been so far the most expensive unboxing series because I've had to buy two watches. I paid $400 for the numbered and limited one and $150 for the fake one. But if you've watched this far, let me just offer you a piece of advice. You can't go wrong with either. The reason why I love these watches is because that the design is actually unique. Sea Gull, or Seagull as I will from now on call it, is a company that basically makes its own watches. These are definitely watches that will make you friends at cocktail parties. These are not copies, and these are not basically just derivatives. They have some heritage, they have some history. And that, to me, is fascinating. If you're on the fence, just go for it. You will not regret it. And before I leave you, I just want to take a moment to say thank you to all of you who watch and comment and like and subscribe. It means everything to me. It really does. So for now, I'm Mr. Jacobson. Thank you all so much for watching, and have a great day.